Hello, 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 and welcome back to some more Rune Factory 2 watering can. Only I should not try to do that. It's finally winter, and it's a bit after one in the morning. What's the communication skill? 77. So let's start. Let's see what we find next year. Let's pet the fire. Brushy, brushy. I said that communication skill really goes up fast. So, there's some news going on now. Also, Zo might be joining us later. Who knows? Probably. Hopefully. Maybe. Hopefully. Uh. So, I'm in, once again, a recording binge state. However, this time, I will not be binge recording Room Factory 2. Because I'll be... Yeah, I'm going out of town for about a week and a half. So I have about a week to record for, like, a week. A week and a half. <laughs> sort of uh, videos. So that was... <laughs> yeah. Quite a lot of stuff to record. But, I mean, if I continue doing three videos a day each day, it'll be fine. So yeah, just need to uh, binge a lot more Tevi, as well as, you know, play some of the other games I've maybe got going on. And yeah, no, that's about it. Just gotta stick to my uh, supposed normal regular, my supposed uh, three videos a day. Supposed. Only. Oh, hello, is a... Uh... You come here to join the runes? Cool. Why is Discord why is OBS not hearing you? No? Oh wait, I think I know what it is. Uh no? Wait. Ta da! Now say stuff. Rar. Hello! Azura Hello. has come to join us as we sweep the fireplace. Sweep the fireplace, huh? Don't get lit on fire. Yeah. <laughs> We're auditioning for a role as a chimney sweep. But yeah, I was just uh, mentioning to everyone oh, about. Your Cinderella audition. Yeah, I was just mentioning right. to everyone about how we have, um, a lot of stuff to record in a <laughs> rather short-ish, not super short-ish, amount of time. Sure. Yeah. I still have yet five more episodes of Tevi to do. So maybe after this we can go and record some Tevi. I also have more Witch Spring Eye, some more Moonlight Eye, some more Danganronpa, <laughs> some miscellaneous episodes, and need to start recording some new stuff. And I think I have an idea for what one of the new Let's Plays will be. Well, you see, there's a My Little Pony video game for the Switch. Of course there is. So I was thinking of doing a recording of that with the people from my pony group. Now here's the question. Is it Friendship is Magic, or is it just like generic My Little Pony? It's Gen 5. I don't know. I can't tell if that's better or worse. Also, speaking of which, I need to uh, download uh, Gen 5 to uh, watch that while I'm out on my trip, where I won't have access to internet for over a week. I won't be able to go doom scrolling on Twitter. Whatever will I do? Uh, maybe you'll break yourself of that terrible habit.
What the? What are you even actually skilling up by doing this? Isn't it obvious? No. Communication. Wait, are you actually cleaning or are you sending smoke signals? <laughs> no, I'm just using the brush. It doesn't matter what I use the brush on. I still are in communication. I just figured oh, the fire was the funniest. Because you're supposed to be using the brush to brush, like, the pets and stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. But you still get a decent amount of XP even if you don't use it on the animals. And being in the barn with the animals means that there's so much lag, it takes at least twice as long to brush. Hey, Claire. Hi. Go brush your mother. Do 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 Brushy brushy! Yeah, games this back would in the day. feel less awkward if you had done this with with the the initial character, huh? Yeah. Do, 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 do. You know what, maybe after this we'll go and do those two episodes or more of Moonlight I, that I need to do. I think that you'd passively enjoy watching Moonlight Eye. <laughs> it's a roguelite game, but with a, uh, was it, with a shop aspect. You go into the dungeon and, like, get monster drops and you sell them at your store. That's predominantly it. It's also a game that basically demands to be binged. So it requires a fair amount of active information at any one time. So maybe we'll go and do a few episodes of that and see what we're feeling like. Uh, I got to... So, playing Tevi earlier today, I finally passed um, half... Uh, I finally p finished the halfway point of the achievements. Oh... It has 110 achievements, and I got the 55th today. <laughs> nice. So it's like... Like, a lot of them are just gone by, you know, playing the game. Mostly, it's, a lot of the achievements are beat this boss. And then there are those that's like, complete this chapter. Which is how I know I... I'm pretty sure I'm on the second last chapter, because I think there's like... There's an achievement for beating chapter 7, and then one for beating the game, but no achievement for beating chapter 8. So it's like, and that's not even spoiler or anything, so it's like, well, on the one hand I can tell about how long the game is, but on the other hand, I can also tell, like, how long the game can be expected to be just based off of as you play the game it will tell you like how much like completion you have i think i'm in the high 60s i think i'm at like 67 mm percent -hmm. so i mean at this rate i'll probably 100 percent it on like episode 40. <laughs> So, you know, that's not bad.
I'm thinking for Rift Wizard, I might still uh, record it to you there. I just want to get a video where I actually beat the game. Exactly. That's why you should always be recording every run. Because that might be the time you reach the end. Didn't I get to, like, level 20 yesterday? I know you got to level 19. I don't remember if you beat it. Yeah, like, I got super far down, and then I think there's, like, some enemy that's like, yeah, no, I'm going to be dealing an absurd amount of damage to everything on the screen every turn. Yeah, was it Anywhere from you one damage like... to, like, 30. Now, was it that you, uh... Wasn't that the one where you decided to fight God instead of the Pope? Probably. The Pope had 14,000 health, okay? Like... Yeah, and God needed to be killed, like, seven times. God had seven health and seven shields, but any damage it takes gets redirected to one of its own allies. Plus, also, I believe it had a thing to let it, like, reincarnate at least once. Probably. Yeah, by the time you reach, like, level 15, it becomes a lot more important, like, which enemies you choose to fight. Yeah, that immortal vampire that we had gotten, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was neat. And I still remember, if you manage to get the uh, Jar of Ectoplasm, the one that can make your summons uh, ghostly, and if you apply that to... If you have that and have something that can summon a witch... Because if you summon, like, a ghost flat out, it can't become a ghostly ghost because it's already undead. But if you summon a witch and the witch is ghostly, then when the witch summons a ghost, it's a ghostly ghost. Uh, which makes it undead undead. <laughs> So more undead than a regular undead? Yeah, basically, yeah. Does that help? I don't think that does anything, no. I don't think it gives it like any like stat boosts or anything. Although it is kind of neat like playing the game and like seeing different things like Oh hey, this thing that gives, you know, twenty five percent uh resistances to all of your summons, like that applies to your pets, and it seems to stack with other stuff. <laughs> so you have that and metallic. Your summons go a long way. But it's like, that one specifically applies to your pets when, like, most of the stuff doesn't. <laughs> At least I think it's like the items don't apply to pets, but the skills do or something. Hard to tell exactly. I will say, it can be a lot of fun getting, like, the cantrip shoes super early and getting just every level one spell. <laughs> Unfortunately, each spell can only be upgraded once. You can't get, like, all three upgrades for a spell. <laughs> That could be interesting. Get, you know, wolf pack arctic clay wolves. <laughs> Communication is already 85. We started at like 77. And we've been at this for about 14 minutes. Uh huh. I mean,. To be fair, when speed up, but still. What's your communication at now? 85. Mm. So by the end of the episode, you should have maxed it. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
And I think that's the last skill I'm going to probably actually try to maximize. I'm pretty sure that my chemistry is going to wind up maximizing from all of these levelers that I'm planning on making, but... Yeah, between the levelizers and the potions, it seems possible that my uh, chemistry is going to get maximized. Oh gosh, you know it would be really uh, funny to try? Rift Wizard, uh, watering can only. Hey, that's what you should do for the, uh, for the Rift Wizard thing. Watering can only. Only water spells. I don't think water is a type of spell on that, though. Oh. Well, Wish then I, I could... guess it's a cover then, I, then only ice and fire. <laughs> I wish I could play it on my handheld, because of course I'm not, I'm not bringing my desktop computer when I go out of town in a week. Obviously not. But it would be nice to still play Rift Wizard. I don't want, I also don't want to just bring an entire keyboard along with me. <laughs> yeah. I still bring along some animes, bring along my earbuds, bring along the VR, of course. The VR is fun. Eh. Yeah, the VR has a uh, roller coaster game, quote unquote game. Uh -huh. Basically, you just, you know, sit there and it makes you watch through as if you're in a roller coaster. And I say that you should sit while doing that, because if you stand, you'll probably fall over. Heck, I was sitting and I almost fell over. <laughs> I say it could be fun as a thing to do in a party. Uh, have watch people just stand there and try to like <laughs> uh you know put them through the roller coaster while they're standing and see if they fall down <laughs> of course it sounds like well pff, you're just watching a video of course you're not gonna fall down it's like vr does weird things to a person's brain <laughs> it's not like just watching a movie on a screen I think it could be really awesome to, like, actually watch a movie that was made to be watched in VR. So you basically, like, have your point as, like, a camera. And you can just look all around. So, like, obviously there's plot happening. But, like, if you turn around and look away, maybe you'll see, like, an assassin trying to, like, hide behind a corner or something. Like... Oh gosh, that, but like as a detective game, you can like flash back to uh, certain events, like you're stuck and you have to stay in the room, but you can see and hear everything that's happened and you have to like look around at the right moment. And... I would say uh, Harvest Moon slash Room Factory in VR would be great. Except that there are a lot of farming simulator games in VR, and so far I haven't found any of them to actually be great. Basically what you want is a uh, full dive VR farming sim game. Like in the like in the lines of like Sword Art Online or any of those other ones, except you just go farming. Uh, also, I mean... I don't want it to be, like, full dive farming, because, like, I would just farm in that case. Like, I don't want to have to actually, like, dig through the dirt, you know, plant the seeds, whatever. I would like it to be in, like, a Harvest Moon sense. I take my tool, use it on the dirt, now it's plowed soil. Uh, now it's, like, tilled soil, whatever. Take the seed item, 
like throw the seeds onto the tilled soil. Boom, now the seeds are planted. Take the watering can and just use it on the space instead of all of the dirty work that actually goes into farming. A simplified version. I don't want to I don't want to get hurt, so I put all my points into farming. <laughs> I wanted maximum stats, so I decided to farm. I wanted to maximize my stats, so I decided to farm. Even better, uh, a more Rune Factory-like farming game, so like with the monsters, like you were saying with SAO. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> wake up at 8 a.m. instead of 6, but we got to stay Well, the reason I think here. SAO in particular is because I do generally like games that have the um, your skill increases as you use it sort of setup. Oh, yeah. Uh, like Rune Factory. <laughs> exactly. As opposed to just, oh, hey, you level up from killing stuff or whatever. Oh, yeah. And then you assign your points. Hey, hey you killed 100 monsters with your broadsword. Okay, cool. I'm going to level up Pickpocket. <laughs> Or, like, in Rune Factory 4, you have a defense skill. You want to take a wild guess how you level up your defense? Block attacks. No, just get hurt. You can't actually block. Oh. I mean, that does make me think, what is it, Final Fantasy 2, I think? Where... Yeah. You mention this every time I bring... It up. Well, yeah, every time, because it's, it's a really good example. I just don't understand why so many people don't like it. Because, uh, I mean, it's a very, I mean, as shall we say, easily exploitable system. Best way to, you know, boost your physical stats right from the beginning is to go into a battle with a random enemy and just start beating your party members up. See, I think it would be better if there was some sort of, like, an arena mode where you could just, like, spar with your teammates to boost the stats that way instead of having to go into a fight and do it. Because going into a wild fight to do it, it feels like you're uh, abusing an exploit. Oh, right, I don't have this anymore because it's winter time, obviously. I will say one thing that's... Uh... That's interesting about the game is that the way that you increase your HP and MP, it has, it, in a way, it actually has nothing to do with how much damage you take in a given fight. Like, that applies to, like, your defenses, but, and, like, your magic resistance, that whatever, I forget whatever it is. Sure. But the way that your HP and MP, uh, like, maxes go up is entirely based on how much lower it is than it was at the start of the fight. That's... In other words, like, and that's why the Blood magic. Drain spell, once you get access to it, is an amazing way to, uh, like, to quickly, like, max out HP for all your party members, because, yeah, just start casting that on the, on the party and I mean, ultimately, you're going to have to, you know, switch around. Only one one party member won't get their increase in a given fight. Uh, because if all you're doing is draining each other's HP, well, one person is going to end up with all of it at the end. What, makes what it, I've the thing always that found like, super annoying in games like that is when you have a cleric that has, like, a cure wound spell... And you're out in the field and your party members are damaged and you can't just use the cure wounds spell. You have to go into a fight, then you can cure wounds. Wait, really? What games have that set up? Uh... But the only one I'm thinking of is Bravely Default and also uh, Pokemon Gen 2. Probably also Gen 1, I think. Specifically with stuff like Recover or Soft World, because you can use Soft World oh. as a field move in Gen 2, but it does not cure the Pokemon that uses it, instead it lowers its health to raise another Pokemon's health. Really? That's, that's kind of weird. But yeah, Pokemon but, uh... is a big thing of that. I think 
all of the self-healing moves you can only use in battle. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're right. That makes that makes sense. But I, I just have to say that the drain equivalent spell for MP, I think it's called Osmos or Osmosis or something like that. Osmosis Jones? The interesting thing about it, well, first of all, there is a very limited number of those spell scrolls in the game. I think there might actually only be two, but there is one enemy in the game that can drop them. But it is like a very rare drop. So it's like, it can take a while to actually, you know, get them for your party. Uh, even worse, considering that I'll get, I'll get back to that in a moment, but um, it just becomes so funny. It's just like, go into a battle. Hey, I cast this spell to drain the MP of, you know, of the other party members. And it's just like, yeah, then you just easily, you know, increase the max MP of everyone except the one who cast the spell. And it's just so funny. But yeah, one of the big flaws of the game is the fact that... Um, the uh sorry brain fog here one of the big flaws is that that feature works no <laughs> is is the fact that you know all of these things that you can do to increase your mp and you know hp and all of your stats and all that stuff well that's great for three members of the party and it is a four party member game Oh no, in every single fight you go into, you cannot increase the maximum health and also maximum MP of all four of your four party members in every each and every single fight you enter, whatever will you do. No, that is even slightly what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the fact that, yeah, like, you can, of course, just go into it and just like, okay, this fight, this person's gonna be the one who doesn't gain anything. And the next one, oh, now this one will. The problem is, you only, of the four party member slots, three of them are filled with the same character throughout the entire game. The fourth party member slot, yeah, it changes over the course of the game multiple times. That's and I think only two, of them, only two of them uh, characters show up as, like, as the fourth, par uh, fourth party member slot twice. Because uh, I'm pretty sure by the end of the game, almost everyone who is in your fourth party member slot, uh, spoiler alert, uh, dies. So it's basically a three party member game with an add on. Yes. Now, the thing is, once you have the fourth party member, like the, the final fourth party member, like they're with the party forever for the rest of the game. But you're very near the end of the yes, game. Yes, once you get you the are... last one that you're going to have in the party, it lasts for the rest of the game, yes. Well, based on what I just said, it could also have easily been that they leave and you're actually is just stuck with three by the end. But no, yeah, you have four party members, but that person has not been in your party at all in the game. Up until the point where you finally get them in the game. Technically, that's not true. They are part of the party in the very first battle of the game, the one where you are scripted to lose. Because, of course, it's a game that starts off with a, hey, yeah, here's a battle you're forced to be in, and you are forced to lose it. Didn't Final Fantasy 1 start with that as well? Uh, no. I no? don't think there's any scripted battles in which you are forced to lose. Ah. Uh. In the first one. No way, I think I'm remembering wrong. The idea of the yeah, the plot behind the first game is like that there's a demon, right? That like keeps going yeah. back in time and redoing the events of the game. It loses yeah. the first fight and then it kills you on the final fight. Is what it's been doing yeah. this whole time. And the only way to break the loop is either for you to lose the first fight or for you to win the last fight. Yes. 
And, um, uh, what was I to say? There was something, something, something dark about. But yeah, so it just becomes annoying where it's just like, I mean, imagine you've been spending 90% of a game, at the very least, focusing on building up the stats of your three consistent party members. Which means that when you finally get the final fourth party member, they are severely behind in all in basically all of their stats. So ninety percent of the game grinding. Ouch. No, I mean like like no, I'm not saying you're grinding for ninety percent of the game, but I mean you're making progress over the course of the game. And you only get like the final one at about ninety percent of the way through the game. So, if they'd been with the party the whole time, the whole party would have been leveled up consistently. Well. So anyway, Rune Factory Four. You have the different skills that you raise by. Uh, doing things that the skills would assist with. Uh, like, you can level up poison immunity by getting poisoned. Stun immunity by getting stunned, etc. Which means that it is impossible to uh, ac even acquire every skill. Because when they're at zero, it's not that they're at zero. It's not that you can see the skill at zero. The skill is invisible until you get at least one experience point in it. So you can't even acquire all of the skills without dying. And no, oh. it's not that there's a dying skill, but that there's a status called... I think it's a knock. Uh, that insta-kills you. And if you want to get a knock resistance as a skill, you have to suffer from it. Which means you have to die. <laughs> You know, with you saying that, oh man, that makes me think of a different Final Fantasy game. Uh -huh. But I mean, the concept of the Blue Mage, which is in a few of them. You know what a Blue Mage is, right? Another one of the mages that uh, specializes in status moves instead of direct uh, no, damage that... or healing. No, uh, the Blue Mage is. You're thinking the Green Mage. Uh, the Blue Mage is the one that spe uh, specializes in monster attacks as it spells uh -huh. so you have to see you've you've talked about this before but you have to see the monsters doing the attacks and there's one attack that insta kills so you have to like see the attack that insta kills or whatever like yep but not just that you not only have to get well not just see it you have to get hit by it which means you have to be in the conditions where you can be get hit by it but you also have to be alive at the end of the fight. So effectively, the only way to properly be able to have it is uh, to get it, is you have to have like a status effect on you that immediately resurrects you. Get hit you can't use a phoenix hit. down in battle? Well, you can, but that doesn't work. You have to be alive at the end of the turn. Uh -huh. See, that's different than just... Yeah, sorry, I phrased it poorly. So, you have to have the status on you that immediately re-resurrects you, get, be able to be hit by the move, get hit by the move, sorry, have the enemy use the move, have the mood move not fail, because of course, it can fail. You know, re -resurrect yeah, no, in Moon Factory 4, you can just be uh, walking back up at the hospital, maybe pay a fine, and then... Uh, you don't have to keep getting hit by knock <laughs> anymore if you want to level it up. Because Rune Factory 4 has an alternate way to raise up skills if you have... I think it's at least one level of a skill. Oh, neat. Uh, whenever you grow a crop to its final form, like when it's ready to be harvested, you see runes appear on the farm. Which you can see even in this game here. When the crops are ready to be harvested, you get runes. In this game, it fills up half of your rune points. Rune Factory 4 
you could either get a small rune that heals up uh, half of your rune points and also gives some plus one to a random skill. Or you could get a large rune that heals up all of your rune points. I think it's all of it. Might be like three quarters or something. And also gives you either plus one to a random stat or plus three to health. So you... <laughs> Rune Factory 4, literally by farming you can build up your skills and your stats. You don't have to level up, you just have to farm. Oh man. I, I as long as you at least I, have I, the skill. I, I'm now just remembering a couple of like the thing, like the staple Blue Mage moves that you can get are special level-based magics. Where, when it's cast, it will work every time, but only affect uh, people whose, like, level uh, is a multiple of whatever the number is. So if it's, like, level 2 haste, everyone whose, you know, level is an even number will get haste. But the max level of the game is 99, and there's level 2 spells and level 5 spells. I think there's also level 3, but that one obviously is not affected here. Which basically means if you max out the character, like get them to the max level without having gotten those spells, congratulations! Uh, you can never get those spells without restarting. Yeah, shout out to... Um... Shout out to Crystal Project for this an optional boss fight, and the way that you're supposed to beat it is by cheesing with the monster spell that you can get somewhere nearby. But that it's also entirely possible to come back like 20 levels later and just completely destroy it. <laughs> Puzzle type boss fights? are really interesting, wouldn't you say? Oh yes! Like, Where like the boss does the like the same set of moves in order. Oh. I mean I was also thinking like you have to burn the rope. No, Cause there's a boss fight in Crystal Project where every third turn it will heal itself for as much health as it has. And if you reach the boss fight at approximately the aggregate period that you would reasonably come across the boss fight, you cannot deal half of its health and damage in three turns. And you also don't have a way to stun it to keep it from healing. So the solution is either come back much later when you can do at least half of its health and damage in three turns, or use a nearby monster ability that, for I think every other boss fight in the game, the ability is basically useless. <laughs> it applies a debuff where when the creature would get healed instead loses as much life as it would get healed from. And I think every other boss fight in the game is programmed that it won't heal when it has that debuff. This boss doesn't care. Fun. <laughs> so literally all you do is you apply the debuff and you wait until it kills itself. Period. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, my, my, my brain is getting is getting stuck on the whole on the learning things by being hit by them. And there's one particular one from one particular game that is stuck in my head right now. Um, the PSP version of Final Fantasy Tactics. I guess it's also true of the original, but uh, I'm specifically thinking the PSP version because it has one other person who's affected. There is a 
move, spell, not really sure how to properly classify it in the game. That, uh... Well, can only be learned by three playable characters. The main character, uh, a character that was added to the PSP version, and a character who's only in the party in the very last fight of the game. Oh no, those bees, what are they guarding you from? They're honey. Just weird because the way that they're all lined up, it looks like yeah. they're blocking. It's like, they're no, all lined all up, ready to be honeyed. Aw, how cute. And what's interesting about it is that the way that you learn this particular attack, which is Ultima, is to be hit by it. Now, there is a point about somewhere between a third to halfway through the game when you can first obtain the move. Because uh, an enemy is able to use it on you. But you have to make sure that the one who gets hit by it is the main character and that they survive. Because again, the, well, I think that's, that's one of the ones where if the main character dies at any point, you just immediately lose. Oh yeah, that's annoying. That... Yeah, honestly, that's a whole different thing, but it's just, but I, I have to agree, Smart. if that's a mechanic, oh. Rice ball. Yum. A baked uh, rice ball. Yum. But yeah, just the whole concept of, hey, I've got a whole team of members, and if a party member gets knocked out, I can just revive them. But if the main character gets knocked out, uh, yeah, you immediately lose. I like to imagine that it's such a case of if the main character gets knocked out, the rest of the party just doesn't care enough to try to revive them. They're like, oh good, let's stop fighting. Let's stop putting ourselves in death's way. Honestly, the impression that I get is more along the lines of the party is so helpless without the main character that they don't even consider that they can revive uh, the main character without the main character instructing them to do so. I mean, that's, like, the obvious, like, how it's supposed to look. But I think my way is funny that they all just, uh... Yeah, that they just don't care? Yeah. And uh, there are some games that kind of have a way of explaining around it, but it's just, like... It's still frustrating. Um... Uh, yeah. Remember in Dark Chronicle, if you're playing and one of your characters gets, like, deadified, you can swap to the other one. Mm-hmm. It should be like, hey, your character's out of health. You want to swap? You should play the other character now. For a bit. But yeah, with the Ultima thing, it's just so funny that it's a special move that only, like, two story characters and one effectively optional character Oh added only to the remake. Um, there are 20 foot tall characters? What? Yeah, you said two story characters. Okay, two <laughs> plot characters. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, one of them only joins the, the party like for the final I don't know if it's for the final battle or final battles. But effectively, in those battles, no one uses that skill. No enemies do, at least. So the only way to have this character who joins at the very end to learn the skill spell, however it's treated in that game, is to have the main character, or the optional character, Use the ability on this person, hope this person survives it, and then they can use it, but only for, like, the rest of the final battles. And it's just like, at that, it's just weird to consider that, hey, I don't know, it's just the whole way, the concept hey. of it is fascinating. And weird. But, uh... 
with the whole thing of um, if the main character dies or gets knocked out or whatever, they just effectively immediately die. There are some games that do manage to make sense of that. Like there Isn't there... Is a... I think that there was one game where the idea is that, like, the main character is the only real one, and all of, like, the other characters are, like, their imagination or whatever it was. So if the main character gets knocked out, all of the others stop existing because they were never actually real. <laughs> huh. It'd be something like if, say, in Pokemon, if you, the trainer, could fight, and if you get knocked out, what are the Pokemon supposed to do? <laughs> kind of a yeah, thing. Yeah, they probably just run away. But, uh... Yeah, can I take a bath with you, Cammy? I would say, uh, don't say that she's a child, but she is at least older than our character, so... So if anything, she's the one who would be in a bad situation. I mean, I think she's probably, like, only, like, 15 or so. Oh. Because she was a how child, like, seven years ago. <laughs> and how old are we? Seven. Oh. Okay. Keep in mind, of course, how long did the pregnancy last, and how... <laughs> What, almost half a season? So, about ten days. Something like that. But, if we can find a calendar somewhere... I don't know where the calendar is. Is it upstairs? Here's the calendar. You can see that we are in year eight. Ooh. Child's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that this is just written by, you know, their our parent. Yeah. Our parents, whatever. And that's just what they put it in. What's her name? Eh, whatever. It's our child. It's child's birthday. It's only ever... Year eight. Uh, Imagine living in a world where, like, all of, like, a year is literally a specific number of weeks to the day. It's like January 1st was always a Sunday, for example. So you never actually needed new calendars. Every January 1st is a Sunday, like... <laughs> I mean... We, I mean, the, th the thing to keep in mind is that, you know, we used to have, you know, years that lasted exactly 360 days. Like, it's, it's just a different calendar system, so it would have been consistent. But, I think uh, at some time in the 70s, you can check on uh, calendars that lead back that far. I think that we lost about 15 days sometime in the 70s in fall, I want to say. Wait, what do you mean we lost 15 days? It went from, like, November 2nd to, like, November 12th or something. Because the one calendar decided that it wanted to be on par with the other calendar that were measured, like, slightly differently, and over the time period of the two calendars being off, there was, like, a 15-day gap. So one calendar's like, eh, screw it. <laughs> Jump ahead 15 days. <laughs> And you think this was as recent as the 1970s? I think. It might have been the 80s? This sounds like something that would have happened in the 1700s. You know what? I want to look this up. Because I have right now. never heard of this before.
Wait, what? Okay. I might have been a little bit off. How many hundreds of years were you off by? About four. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. The Gregorian calendar skips 10 days in October, I got the fall part right, of 1582. Uh -huh. To make up for the extra days which had been accrued under the Julian calendar, it established a more accurate accounting for leap years, blah blah blah. So... There's still only about, like, 442 years ago. Not that far back. <laughs> but it still jumped, like, 10 days. Which is still kind of weird in its own right. Hey, remember when everyone thought that the world was going to end in 2012 because that's just when the Mayan calendar, that, you know, the Mayans that were around thousands of years before, uh, ended? Yeah. So wow, I could say, like, Doomsday or anything, if that's just when they stopped. Yeah. And everyone got so freaked out and paranoid, movies were made about it, and, and I still remember thinking about, like, gosh, people born around the period where I had been born got incredibly unlucky, didn't we? Like, okay, so, I was born in, like, 1994. So, basically, I started school at about five years old, late 94, so, I s finally start school. Y2K. Um, I graduate 2012. <laughs> yeah. I think that there are... I... Oh yeah. Uh, you know, go to college for four years. And then 2016. Uh, just thinking about a thing that I'd seen recently. You know about the whole, like, if you're going on vacation, don't spread it on, like, social media until after you get back stuff? Eh, yeah, why? Because if you say on social media, it's like, hey, I'm off in Mexico this weekend, or whatever, then someone who, like, knows you and knows where you live knows... Hey, your place is going to be empty this weekend. Cool, I'm going to go rob it. Ah. Or if someone... This is more so someone, like, you know, famous posts, like, Hey, check out this hotel I'm staying at. I'm staying at, you know, the Marriott, sixth floor. Why don't we go and party? Then someone knows, oh, you're right there. I can go and kidnap you. Or something. Mostly for people, it's the... People might break into your place if they know it's going to be empty thing. Uh, notably, my apartment is not going to be empty. I am. <laughs> well, yeah, you've got a kitty. Well, so Chandra's going to be coming over to uh, look after the kitty. And she's more violent towards <laughs> uh, intruders than I would be. But also, uh, I still remember going on a road trip with a friend. And like every time we got to a hotel for the night, she would immediately post on Facebook where we were. <laughs> and I'm just there like... <sighs> Someone yeah, could just, yeah. like, plot our course. <laughs> Basically, like... I got a few good pictures uh, from down in Vegas from the, uh, the... <laughs> Every single hotel we stayed at along the way had a pool. And the one we stayed at in Vegas had a pool on the roof. 
And I didn't bring any, like, swimwear, because I didn't have any swimwear. I think it would be what, neat to thing? go swimming in the pool in Vegas. Got some good pictures off the edge of the roof, though. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, just speaking from a bit of personal experience, if you're afraid of heights, um, just be careful about certain VR games. Because those can absolutely trigger your fear of heights. <laughs> Even if you can yeah. feel your feet firmly on the ground, it doesn't look like you're firmly on the ground. I remember one game that, for some reason, spawned me in probably a good hundred or so feet off the ground of what looked like Vegas. Not like on a platform or anything, I was just floating there. I could look down. <laughs> just look around. Look nice. But yeah, before making fun of anyone for, you know, acting weirdly in VR, just keep in mind, your brain thinks this stuff is real. It's weird. But... Also, if anyone knows a good uh, farming VR game, feel free to suggest it in the comments, because... I could totally use a nice, fun, casual farming VR game, and I found a few that look promising, but none of them are really good enough. So good luck with that. <laughs>